Hey everybody, this is uh, Steve Cantwell. I am one of the senior solution architects and instructors here at Cloud Harmonics. Got some experience um, on the Palo Alto firewall that I just wanted to kind of do a knowledge share with you in terms of how to utilize a feature of the firewall called built-in actions. And so if you allow me to kind of introduce and provide a summary of what I'm doing uh, and the reasons behind it, perhaps this is something that you guys um, that are in the information security fields might be able to utilize inside of your own firewalls. And I think it starts out with trying to limit the amount of, I guess, traffic that would normally on a Palo Alto firewall. Most of us are familiar with something called a cleanup rule of some similarity, right? And depending on how your security policies are, that cleanup rule is obviously for its purpose. I don't if you haven't matched one of my existing firewall rules, then obviously you're going to be denied. But there's a lot of logging. There's a lot of traffic that might be hidden in the cleanup rule. And specifically, there may be one, some unwanted type of traffic. Okay. So on a Palo Alto firewall, I've seen a lot of customers that might have a similar rule like this, right? Which says, okay, if you're coming from inside the network and you're going out to, you know, in our case, trade embargoed countries, you know, we don't want traffic going through there. This is the typically how a security policy would set up. What I didn't want to do in my firewall is I didn't want to have foreign countries, okay? I mean, Cloud Harmonics is a U.S.-based company. Most of the customers that we work with are U.S.-based companies. Um, so their policies that I'm about to describe may not exactly match, but the concept, the thought of what I, do, what I want to do I think is important. So it may be in my world or in your world, we agree that we don't, we market to US companies, that we don't need traffic from foreign countries, right? So most of us are gonna have some sort of a rule at the beginning of their firewall that says, hey, I don't want this type of traffic coming into the firewall. You notice that mine is not there. And why is that? Okay, because I don't want people that are port scanning my firewall, doesn't matter what country, doesn't matter if you're in the US. Okay, and the feature set that came out in 9.1.0 of the PanoS software has this option down here for log forwarding with a built in action. So let me show you how I created this. And we'll then proceed and see if this is something that you can use inside of your environment. The first thing I did was to acknowledge, hey, you know what? I don't want anybody from the US that is going to be port scanning me, specifically from the US. And you'll understand that in just a minute, right? So USA port scanners as a tag, okay? Inside the Palo Alto firewall, there is the ability to create application groups, all right? So here's an application group that was built dynamically with a tag called media sources, okay? So if I were to come up to addresses, you'll see that on my firewall, I have manually added in a tag for some items that might generally be considered media sources, right? Again, let me just do a little filter here. Media sources, things that depending on security policy, I might be you know, inclined to let some of this traffic go out. So I have a tag here. I have a address group here that is dynamic. And the matching tag that I wanted was specifically for media sources. And that would dynamically create this list here of everything that I statically added the tag of media to. Okay, great. But what I want to accomplish is to create a dynamic address group based on the firewall protecting itself when somebody or some service or some device tries to port scan the firewall. I'm trying to get the firewall to auto protect itself. All right. So I came from a history uh, in IT where we were one of the first companies years ago, 20 years ago or more, to come up with one of the first intrusion detection solutions. Okay, so that in, we would detect an intrusion. And because the company I worked for did uh, work with SNMP, simple network management protocols, right? We worked for an application that if we, if we saw an intrusion, we could send an SNMP trap back to a switch that would do what? 
disable the switch port. And now the switch or the network protected itself. So I'm applying that same concept of we see traffic that is unwanted, right? Drop USA port scanners. I don't want this type of traffic coming to my firewall. I don't know whose it's going to be. I know they're going to hit my cleanup rule, but I want to do something different. Okay. So I created a dynamic address group specifically on the tag called USA port scanners. Pretty simple. Now, how do I create this list of users or addresses here? I didn't automatically attach, nor do I know any or, or any single IP address on the internet that is going to try and quote unquote port scan me. All right. So in the 9.1.0 firewall capabilities, I found my resolution, which is I created a log forwarding profile specifically to stop bad people that is looking at the rule of cleanup. Okay. So if you match my cleanup rule, I'm going to forward this chat. This, I'm going to do something with this log forwarding profile. And likewise, this log forwarding profile is only looking at traffic that equals the cleanup. Now down over here, I have the ability to add a tag. So I add the tag to the source address and the tag that I want to apply is now called USA port scanners, okay? So now the idea is if I come back over to my policies, and I come back down to my Palo Alto firewall and I look at the cleanup rule and I say, all right, if you're coming from the internet and you are trying to go anywhere with any application, with any service, your action is going to be drop. But I'm also doing this log forwarding profile. This log forwarding profile has the built-in action to add the tag of USA port scanners to the source address associated that caused my rule to have a hit count. As a result of that, I can now come up to my up to my address groups and I can show you that lo and behold, I have 800 and some odd addresses inside. These are IP addresses that came into and maybe they're scripted, right? And that's certainly fine, but these are all these public IP addresses, all 807 of them that have come into my firewall within the last, let's say 30 days, and now I won't ever have to deal with them. Now, why? Okay, most of the time, people are going to do something like this, which is, I wanna create a security policy and let's just call it block USA port scanners. And we're inclined to do this. All right, Steve, so if you are coming from the internet and you are now on this dynamic list here of called, um, let me do this USA port scanners, okay? If you're on this list, doesn't matter where you're trying to go to inside my environment, doesn't matter the application, it doesn't matter what port number, your traffic is now going to be denied. And I don't even need to forward this traffic. This is unwanted traffic. I don't even need to see this traffic at all, right? Maybe I don't even want to log that at session end. This is what most of us are inclined to do is to create a policy like this. And maybe that's rule number one on your firewall. Say, hey, you came in, you tried to port scan my firewall. You did something that was unwanted. So now as a result of that, your traffic has been tagged with a USA port scanner tag. And now your list of addresses are in this USA um, dynamic address group. And that's great. But what we learn on the Palo Alto firewall or what I would like to provide as knowledge transfer to you is that is not really how the Palo Alto firewall necessarily works. See, when traffic comes into the firewall, and I'll just, uh, when the traffic comes into the firewall, actually the denial of service protection and the zone protection are inspected first. So in lieu of putting things under the security policy, a better suggestion is to put your rules down here, okay? So the way we'd interpret my rules here, specifically for me is, okay, 
I also did this for the EDLs, the external dynamic lists. Again, most customers, um, IT people might be inclined to put this external list as a security policy, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. However, it is probably more efficient from your firewall to go, hey, if I see traffic from the internet and you're on any one of these unwanted addresses and you're trying to come into my environment, sorry, you're gonna be denied. Now we don't create a session for this at all, okay? But you can see the number of hit counts for people that are coming in. I could have easily, again, to summarize, right? I could have easily had this show up in a security policy that gets denied. But now my firewall is more efficient because it sees traffic come from any of these addresses and it's denied. Okay. So what happens when somebody from a foreign country comes in? Well, I've got this rule down here that says, well, if you're not coming from the United States and you're trying to do something inside my environment, you're going to be dropped. Now, I also could have that rule as a security policy, but again, from an efficiency perspective, sorry, you're coming from Mexico, you're coming from India, you're coming from the Sudan, right? We just don't want that type of traffic in, more efficient. Now, what happens if you're from the US, okay? So you're, you come down here and you don't match anywhere here. You're not here yet because you are from the US. Okay, for, you're some, you are from the US. Okay, so now we would go through the security policies and try to find a matching condition for traffic that's coming from the US. Now, if this rule didn't exist, right, because this was just a candidate config dead, so that rule really didn't exist, okay? What other rule would allow traffic from the internet inside my environment? Well, only this cleanup rule would match. So because you were from the US and you matched your hit, Log forwarding profile adds you back to the USA port scanner as the address group, okay? And your addresses would show up here. Now that I know your IP address, the second time, whether it's a script or whatnot, that your device or something inside the environment goes ahead and tries to scan your firewall or services again, well, the second time, again, we read the DOS protection and we go, oh, Shame on you. You've already been seen by this firewall. And as a result of that, you are now on this USA port scanner list and your traffic will be denied for as long as you want it to be. Okay. So this is a technique where we can take your external dynamic lists. You could take some of this unwanted traffic. You could take uh, that maybe perhaps uh, no foreign countries and in lieu of them being in the security policies, acknowledge that there, it's more efficient to put them inside of a DOS protection policy. And now we will not have this traffic ever seen by the firewall again. Now, pros and cons of this, okay? What happens if a legitimate person shows up? Okay, what would we do in this situation is, well, we have somebody who's on one of these lists. How do I know that? How do I verify that? Well, there's two ways that we could do it. One, it's quite simple to come up to the objects and see if, they're, if the IP address in question is inside this list right here. And if it's in that list, then clearly you've been added, right? But it's easy enough to go, hey, maybe this is my accidental person. Let me go ahead and just unregister you from that tag will unregister the USA port scanner tag. And now that lit, that machine has been whitelisted back again. Okay. Another thing that you can do uh, in case we're trying to do some troubleshooting perhaps is we could always go down and look at the IP tag, right? Uh, again, the IP tag uh, is going to show you when we registered the IP address. So here's some tags from, well, probably the last nine minutes ago, right, of people that are constantly showing up on my firewall. It's nonstop. It never ends, but I'll never see this traffic come into my firewall, okay? Um, now, from a troubleshooting perspective, right, perhaps maybe this was a user. How could I help troubleshoot if a user is accidentally on this list? Well, we can always do a packet capture on the firewall and inspect traffic coming from the internet to 
the outside interface of my firewall, and then we could see their IP address showing up as a drop. Okay. So in conclusion, I wanted to uh, do a knowledge share on how to take advantage of the log forwarding profile, log forwarding profile specifically for the built-in action. So I gave you an example here of how I might use it inside of my environment, because I've got people that I would prefer not to access my firewall. Maybe perhaps in another scenario, well, let's describe this. So imagine you've got a computer that has been compromised and you create some sort of a address group where the tag is called compromised devices inside your environment. Okay, great. Then you could create a security policy that says, okay, traffic from inside my network, if you're a quote unquote compromised device trying to access anything inside my environment, the action is denied. Maybe you could add a splash screen to say, please go see IT. There's something wrong with your computer, however you'd want to do it. Okay, everybody. So let me just summarize uh, the benefits. We have a log forwarding profile within the log forwarding profile. Uh, consider taking um, advantage of this built-in action for limiting uh, uh, unwanted traffic inside your environment. Again, this is Steve Cantwell from Cloud Harmonics. Appreciate your time. Thank you.